Good afternoon, this is Rabbi Sachs coming to you from the Chai Center and welcome to the Chai Academy. Chai Academy is a place where we discuss online, Facebook or Zoom, depends when, where, um, various topics of Jewish interest and, um, and we try and make it interesting. So interest and interesting. Now, please excuse the bad hair day. Not every day can be uh, can 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 one's uh, to pay the you know, the uh, in tip top shape. Hello, Eileen. So so good. Uh, good afternoon. So t today's topic. Yesterday we we discussed the Jewish view of Xmas, not to get into comparative religions or. Uh, you know that 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 wasn't the idea. The idea was just to point out a couple of interesting, interesting things. What was the setting, and um, and how we we as Jews had nothing, absolutely nothing to do with the, with you know with this with the story. Um, today is um, is which is by the way shaky ground because it's the religion, one religion, different religion. Um, Generally, it's not not something I, as a rabbi, am comfortable with, but uh, it was. I tried to make it very parav and benign, and and um, because I'm definitely not the expert. Okay, so today we're going to discuss the 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 Jewish year, the Jewish New Year versus the civil New Year. As we know, um, we are about to change the the. The calendar year from 2020 to 2021, thank God, and uh, couldn't happen sooner for all of us, I assume, unless you're in the um, PPE business, or is it PPP? I forget what it is. Um, it, it uh, you know, then then you made a killing, but otherwise everybody else, it was um, just a killing. Um, it was terrible. So we're looking forward to a new year. We're looking forward to new, new. Um, New energy, so there is there is a there's there's a big difference between the Jewish New Year versus the civil New Year. The difference is one of them is a lunar calendar, and one of them is a solar calendar. So a solar calendar is what the civil New Year is, and it basically how long does it take for the complete revolution to happen? which is 365 days. Sometimes it's 366 in a leap year. So, so um, it's, it's, it takes 12 months, or it takes 365 days, divided by 30 or 31, and you'll, ha you'll get um, you know, 12, 12 months. If you divide it, I think, by 30, you'll get um, 20, uh, 30 point, I don't know. So it, they figured it out. So what, some months have 30, some months have 31, and it's all based on the sun. It's dictated to by the sun. As opposed to the Jewish New Year, that is a, a completely, it's a lunar calendar. So the lunar calendar is this, it's, it's how each month, right? The moon is, is, is um, it waxes and then wanes. And it takes it takes a certain amount of time, and that is a month. You times it by twelve, and and there you have three hundred and fifty-five days. Three hundred and fifty-five days. So it, it's um, and each month is twenty-nine days, and twelve hours and a certain amount of minutes, fourteen minutes, um, something like that. And therefore, some Jewish months have twenty-nine days. Some Jewish months have thirty days. Um, and when you add them all together, it's 355 days. That is the lunar cycle. So, so one one is based sun, one is based moon. It's interesting why we chose the lunar cycle. Well, we didn't choose it. It was the very first mitzvah given to the Jewish people as a nation. They were about to leave Egypt. They were slaves in Egypt. They had had a terrible life. Right, and um, slaves for two hundred and ten years of, of, of bitter slavery, and um, they they God told them that that um, there's, they they're going to need a couple of mitzvahs in order to get out. Essentially, one of them was learn how to calculate the month. It's a biblical mitzvah. 
it comes straight from the Torah and 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 essentially is is that they were in throughout the holy temple period and before that Moses Joshua etc and, and then through the prophets and, and the kings and finally we get to the holy temple they were actually people who who were incredibly well versed in 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 in, in the study of the moon where it should be in the, in the sky at this particular time where it should how the moon should should lay how how much you know where the sun um rebounds where it, the sun touches it and um it it is it is um it was and, and it's a very complicated it's actually a very complicated um study i believe it's it's probably all calculus um which my first day of calculus i threw up into a brown bag so you won't catch me um, studying it too quickly in the near future, um, intensely anyway. So it's it's that was the first mitzvah. The first mitzvah given as a nation is learn how to figure out the month. Right, and back in the day, back in the times of the holy temple, as opposed to now when we had a holy temple, there were witnesses that that came forth to the holy temple and said we saw a new moon. They brought into a room, and the court, the supreme court is sitting there and they're discussing what did you see when did you see okay that yes you did see a moon a second witness came and it was done via witnesses they knew it was going to be this day or that day but they needed witnesses to confirm once they had two witnesses it was the beginning of the month nowadays we have something called the calendar method where 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 it is a a fixed method and it's done once again it's math and they can tell you, they can tell you which day of the week your birthday will fall out in, 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 you know, in 300 years. It's a calculation. Your civil birthday, your, your, your Hebrew birthday, it's all done by the same calculation. They can tell you which day of the week. We, I could tell you if you need to know when Rosh Hashanah will be in 10 years from now, 20 years from now because it's by the calendar method, so it's a good calendar, but it used to be done via sight. And that was the biblical mitzvah, is to calculate the months, first by sight, then when the temple was destroyed, it was done via um, you know, sight and witnesses, then it was done via calendar. The second mitzvah, by the way, which we won't focus on now, is the mitzvah of circumcision. Right? The third mitzvah was they had to bring a paschal offering. So they, they, were, they were given a few things to do to honor God, and then they were taken out of Egypt. So, so it's interesting to note that that the um, that in the Torah it doesn't call the first day of Tishrei, the Hebrew month of Tishrei, which is Rosh Hashanah. It doesn't call it Rosh Hashanah. It just doesn't. the The term Rosh Hashanah which we're all so familiar with, is, is not mentioned at all in the Torah. Right? It's not. In fact, in fact, when God gave them, when God gave them the mitzvah of calculating, God told them that it shall be on the first day of the first month, where you, where you um, it should be the first of months. So it would seem like that springtime, the Hebrew month of Nisan, should be Rosh Hashanah because it's the first day in the first of months. So the way it worked was God told them that the first day of the first of months is, is the new moon. And on the 14th day, you will be redeemed, providing on the 10th day, you bring a Paschal offering, etc. So Rosh Hashanah, one would think, should be in Nisan, should be in the spring. Not where it is now, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and Sukkot. Right? And in the Torah, it's very, it's ambiguous. It's really ambiguous, it doesn't say. We only know from the Mishnah that Rosh Hashanah is the first day of the seventh month. So somewhere between the Torah and, and the Mishnah, it was, it was clarified. It was clarified. Now, chances are, are, chances are it was clarified because in the Torah, it, 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 in, in, in a certain section of the Torah, it talks about Rosh Hashanah. 
it talks about Yom Kippur. And then it says, so Rosh Hashanah is the first day of the seventh month, counting from Nisan, counting from the spring. Yom Kippur is the tenth day of the seventh month. And Sukkot is the fourteenth day of the seventh month. When it talks about Sukkot, it says, and you should celebrate Sukkot as the year ends, right after the end of the year. So that's where the Torah first intimates that Sukkot is Gemoni Bani. Is is um that that's that's where the Torah first intimates that that Sukkot is celebrated after the year ends. Now year ends, then the year new year begins. So that's where they got it from. They got it from the Torah. That's what that's that's where they got it from. That's when they realized that Rosh Hashanah is the day. Um, of the first day of the seventh month. Now, why? Right, there has to be a reason why God chose the first day of the seventh month to be Rosh Hashanah. And the answer, the main answer is, on that day, Adam and Eve were brought into the world. So, when flowers are brought into the world, right? And so the flowers, there's nice flowers, there's nice roses, there's nice tulips, there's, no, there's nice um, irises and birds of paradise. Look at me. I'm this haughty uh, culturist here. Um, there's all these different, but what benefit? How does that benefit God? If there's no humans around, how does it benefit humans? They're just flowers. Right, you go to Denmark and it's flowers. At least we can appreciate it. But there's no humans, right? When there's animals, so there's animals. When there's this, there's this. But until the human being was brought down to the world, the 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 creation wasn't complete, and it was only complete when when they came into the world, which is the first day of the seventh month. So that's why it's Rosh Hashanah, because it's not Happy Birthday World. It's Happy Birthday man happy birthday um, happy birthday mankind Lenny I don't understand the question um, it, it's a, the, the, at some point you have a you have a starting point that's what they're telling you it's 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 the the first day so the the um, so it's it's Rosh Hashanah we also we also know that many many things happened Many, many things happen on Rosh Hashanah. Many things. So we know that um, the the the, um, the the Hannah, she was barren. She couldn't have a kid, and God remembered her and blessed her. Right on Rosh Hashanah, we know that Isaac was tied, um, and the Akeda, the offering of Isaac, happened on Rosh Hashanah. Right. Um, so so there's, we we know that God remembered Sarah. On Rosh Hashanah, so there's different different uh, things that happen, and there's many, 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 many more. So Rosh Hashanah is is the day where we celebrate the new year. However, the first day of the first month, it may not be a new year, but it's also a new year for kings. So while Rosh Hashanah, God decides what's going to happen. What's going to happen in, in, during the the whole year? And it's when we reach out to God, and it's it's considered the new year. We change from last year. We changed from five seven eight zero to five seven eight one, and it's Rosh Hashanah. But the Mishnah tells us that the first of Nisan is not is not um, to to to. to it's, it's, it's not to be forgotten. It's a very special day. What is that day? So it's that day is for is for kings. So if a king started six months before Nissan, the first of Nissan comes around. It is considered the second year of his rule. So he had six months in five seven eight zero. Oh, Right, the first of Nissan came. It's now the second year of his reign, and that makes a big difference because 
there are certain taxes, right? So it, it, they had to know also when you write documents. So when you had a king of Israel, you had to write documents. You had to write, the, this is the day of the month, this is the year, which year in the reign of the king. So the first of Nisan is when the king celebrated his new year. Rosh Hashanah is for agriculture. Rosh Hashanah is, to, you know, you, you have to know um, when, when, you know, when, when the year is and, and jubilee is and when the sabbatical year is. That's all Rosh Hashanah, right? That's when the clock changes of the year, the calendar year changes. But the first of Nisan is a, a, um, a for, for kings. Rosh Hashanah on the seventh month, that's, that discusses the harvest, that discusses the, it's all agriculture, right? When, when are you obligated to tithe? When are you obligated to et cetera, et cetera. But for the kings, then New Year, and they celebrated it. It was like, oh, another year to the king. Da, 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 right? That was on. And if you wrote the first year of the king's reign, it was really the second year of the king's reign, the document is invalid. Just like in, in civil law, you write a wrong year, or you write something which is which is you know which is a part and part and parcel of the contract, and you get it wrong. Um, instead of writing LLC, you wrote PC. The contract is you have to correct it. So you'd also have to correct this to say it's the second year of the king's reign, the third year, the fourteenth year, whatever it may be. So Nissan is a new year. The Mishnah tells us that we have actually four days in a year where we count um, the, the four years, the four, the four, there's four days in a year where we count it as a new year, like a new beginning. It's, it's a dateline for something. Uh, Eileen wants to know which book. So I have this book. I use this a lot, the Comprehensive Hebrew Calendar. And in it, in it, you can't really see, but basically this year is 2031. So September 14th, 2031 will be a Sunday and it will correspond to the 26th day of the month of Tishrei. So it's, it's a great book to have. This is where I can figure out when, when a kid's bar mitzvah is, five years in advance, etc. You could also do it online, of course. Yes. Um, it's a great book to have. So, so, um, so there's other dates. So there's four, a total of four New Years where there's clear demarcations of what this year represents or what this, what this is. Um, so there is the Tu Bishvat. You probably heard of Tu Bishvat. Tu Bishvat is New Year for trees, right? The winter rains are over. The sap begins to, to come forth from the roots. And um, the new year for trees is is counted um, for because there's certain Jewish laws that for the first three years of a fruit tree, even outside of Israel, this is one of the only agricultural laws, or the only agricultural law, or one of the only um, that is takes place in diaspora as well as Israel. So you plant a tree, and you're probably not going to get fruit within the first three years. But if you do get through fruit within the first three years, right? So it is, it is, it is considered orla, you're not allowed to eat it. The fourth year you are, right, in short. So once Tu Bishvat hits, it's counted as your second year. If your tree was planted in existence in the earth, right, and, and um, it, it's once Tu Bishvat, the 15th day of Shvat, it's a new year for trees. So it's their new year. Just like with the king, it would be the second year of his reign. Also with the tree, it would be the second year of the tree's existence. So then you have one more year, and that would be the third year. And then, and when that ends, you could eat, begin eating from the fruits. So Rosh Hashanah is all agricultural and the year itself, right? Nisan, the first day of Nisan, is when the king is goes into his next year. Tu is where the the, um, the the trees, and they say actually the trees are judged. In addition to being judged on Rosh Hashanah, God gives them a second look. 
whatever that means. Right? So now, is it only trees? Is it bushes? So those who now, because they're legalizing marijuana, you know, is the cannabis bush judged on the, or is it a cannabis tree? Is it judged on Tuvishvat or not? I don't know. But it definitely gives a new definition to the term high holiday, doesn't it? So there's one more year. There's one more new year that we celebrate, and that is exactly one month before Rosh Hashanah, from the first day of Elul, which is technically, you know, the, the, the first day of the sixth month, the last day of the yearly month <laughs> calendar. It gets a little complicated. And that is for cattle. It's a, it's a new year for cattle. When do you, you have to tithe, you have to bring, you have, you have to tithe your cattle. So it, it's, it's, you have to tithe it within a certain amount of time. So if you haven't tithed it before the first of Elul, you better get to it because once the first of Elul comes around, there's a whole new tithing process and a tithing. So so you have to make sure that you tithe your cattle, otherwise it gets complicated, and and um, and there's ramifications. I'm not so much into animal tithing, but but it's brought down in the Torah. So so agricultural laws is a month later, but cattle laws is a month earlier. So now, we're going into 2021, right, which is called the Civil New Year, which actually has, it's nothing to do with, with the Jewish New Year, right? However, however, just like in the Jewish New Year, a person makes new resolutions, right? You know, I plan to do this this year, I plan to do that this year, you know, and in the Jewish New Year, I'm going to be a better person, etc. So, if the if the civil New Year inspires somebody to make a good resolution, the Lubavitcher Rebbe said, then use it, then use it. So while it's true, it's not one of our New Years. It's not a special date on our calendar. It's a special date on the civil calendar. It's not a special date on the Jewish calendar per se. But however, if that inspires you, if January first. 2021 inspires you to do something positive this year by all means take advantage of it because it's it's anytime you make a good resolution it is phenomenal and anytime many people make a new resolution that is you know double or triply phenomenal so so um so if january 1st you don't you don't have to push off your good resolution to to rosh hashanah right you, you say okay i'm gonna go to the gym and um, I used to be a gym rat, and you know the new year came, so the gym went from 25 people at 5 a.m. to 125 people at 5 a.m. And then it it um, slowly, slowly dissolved. By the time you got to January 20th, we we were back to normal. Thank God, because it was hard to get a machine. Um, you couldn't tell I was a gym rat, can you? But um, but a good resolution, the idea of a good resolution is, and by the way, there is, there is a trick to the trade of this good resolution, is not to keep it to yourself, right? Share it with others. So if you just have a good resolution, you say, okay, I'm gonna do this this year, if you share it with somebody else. So there's actually three times a year we can make a good resolution. They're up, you can make it any day of the year. But opportune times, one is Rosh Hashanah, one is the civil new year, and and um, and the other one is on your birthday. That's kind of a new year for you, but that's very individual, right? That's your new year, but it's not celebrated as a, as a whole. It's celebrated anybody else who was born on the same day you were. Um. So so um and of course Jewish New Year versus Civil New Year. Jewish New Year. Is, is 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 done in synagogue and we ask God and poor God to 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 you know give us a good year and it's while it's a, it's a joyous holiday and we have to act joyous it's it's also a sobering holiday because this is when you judged as opposed to the civil new year it's champagne and music and dance and frivolity and frolicking and and uh, cheering and horns and noise makers and clappers etc so it's very different the way they celebrate it but um but a new year it is um god bless a happy healthy 
sweet new civil year, Gregorian year. May God bless us that uh, by the time 2021 comes around, we should all, there should be vaccinations up the gazoo and uh, COVID should be a thing of recent memory because it's going to be recent. And then eventually it will slowly dissipate just like the Spanish flu. God bless.